The actual piece of today's lesson that I want to add on is this idea of systems of linear inequalities. So what happens when you have a two variable equation is you get a line of solution points if there's no power involved. That can lead to an inequality. Okay? So here I'm saying y is greater than or equal to negative 3x minus 1. It's in slope intercept form. So my boundary is going to be a set of points that forms a line. Okay, when you have a flat plane, the boundary will be a line. If you can imagine a, a line, I remember me and my sister were young, riding in the back seat of our car, there was kind of this imaginary line. If I crossed it, I'd get whooped. And if she crossed it, I'd try to whoop her. So we kind of stayed on our own side of the car on those long trips. But anyways, negative 1 is the y-intercept. The slope is down 3 over 1. And I get a set of points that solve the equality. Okay, so, and, and that's part of the solution set. y can equal... Oops. Let's try that again. Now, it wasn't a whole lot better. y can equal or be greater than 3x minus 1. Now, what happens is we are going to be shading on one side of this boundary line or the other. It's called a half plane. Now, being it's y and y measures up and down, I'm pretty confident that the, the shading will go off this way. Okay, but I'm not going to totally fill that in. Now, the second linear inequality is y is less than x plus 2. So the y-intercepts are 2. The slope is rise 1, run 1. This boundary line is going to have to be dotted. I am not including those points as solutions because y cannot equal x plus 2. It must be less than. So less than if it's y would be below. So it looks to me, this is kind of a directional thing, north, south, east, west. It looks to me, here are our answers. Okay? So what you got to understand is this. Just like if you look at your watch, if somebody says, meet me after 5 o'clock, you have to be able to find 5 o'clock on your watch. And then look, where is past 5 o'clock? Well, it's beyond that boundary. So the boundaries always set the field of play. It's no different than a soccer field. Um, okay, where we have the boundary lines and then everybody can play in here. Okay, so this is a system of linear inequalities. So what happens is we're looking where the, the half planes intersect and we find those answers. Okay? <clears throat> so on a state exam, be able to, uh, you won't have to create, but probably analyze a system of, in, of linear inequalities. So here would be 1, uh, y is less than 3. So we would have a horizontal boundary line at 3, broken, because y cannot equal 3, less than. I kind of use little arrows to kind of indicate in my mind where the shade's going to go. x is greater than or equal to 1, side to side, x, 1 greater than or equal to. So now I hope you see that really we're, not, we're down on the southeast right now. We're headed towards uh, you know, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. Okay. And then I got one more inequality in this system. Y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 1. Rise 2, run 3. Dotted boundary because it's greater than. Greater than with y would mean above. And what happens here, you can see it, is you get this little triangle. Okay? So, a system of inequalities is going to produce a, a, a zone of answers. It's actually called a feasible region of answers, or a feasible set. Um, there you go. Now, how do you have boundaries? How is this going to look you know, in, in a situation for that test? Well, anytime there's a limit on something, you'll have a boundary. Okay? So that's kind of what we're going to have. Now, you could see something like this. If they gave you the graph, can you interpret it and say, well, okay, this is what I'm seeing going on. More than likely, this is the kind of thing you'd see. Which system of linear inequalities is shown by this graph? Well, let's look at it. Looks to me like we've got a horizontal boundary, which is a y boundary. So I can say, well, okay, y is at 2 and it's solid, or it's under that. So if I'm thinking y is less than or equal to 2. I also see a, a vertical boundary, which is, is placing a boundary on x. x 
is looks like less than three. Those two should be the easy ones. Now the third one is to look at this diagonal and say, well, what's the inequality for that? Well, slope intercept. Okay? Looks to me like it has a y intercept at the origin. <clears throat> if you look carefully at the slope, it's going down. If I go from this corner point to this corner point, down two over three. So y equals mx plus b. Y negative two thirds x. Now, it can equal it, or it is above it, which would be greater than. All right. So this is simply describing where the answers are based off the boundaries and where the shade is off the boundaries. So that is kind of a typical deal right there. Now, I want to show you, besides just graphing, I want to show you a problem. So, for instance, I could give you a situation where I would say, um, we have a problem where we're, we're going to go on a field trip, and the bus holds, I remember this problem from an algebra problem, the bus holds a maximum of 44 adults and students. Okay? We must have at least three adults. Okay? Somebody could say, well, could you, could you graph out a set of points that would represent combinations of adults and students that would work for this scenario. And this is a kind of problem that's called a linear programming problem. It's a very basic one, but essentially what I would want to be able to do is say I've got students and I've got adults on this bus, but there's limiting factors. Alright? There's a boundary. And one of the things that bounds us is there's only room for 44. So I would be saying adults plus students has to be less than or equal to 44. Okay, now that's not a system, that's one inequality. Secondarily, it says you must have three adults. So the adults have to be greater than or equal to three. So I have a system of inequalities based on information. There's only so much bus space, and I've got to have so many adults. You can graph each one of those. This is in standard form. So if this is 50, we'd be at 44. Every point on that line would be a combination of adults and students that fills up that bus. I cannot be above that line because that would be not enough room for that. I could be below that line. So this would put me kind of in here. But I can't say it's anything because, you know what, i got to have at least three adults. So there's a minimum requirement for adults. So when I find three, that would be a solid boundary line also and I have to stay at it or above it. Okay? So this zone of answers in here would represent combinations of adults and students that would fit on the bus and you still have enough adult chaperones so those kids just don't go absolutely crazy. <coughs> Interestingly, somebody could say, what about that point? And that point there on the outside edge of that feasible region is called a vertex point. And those are very important points because they will maximize or minimize the situation, okay? This is going to be, if my math is right, three adults and 41 students. 41, 3. Now that's an ideal point because it fills up the bus and it gives me my three adults. This point right here would really be a minimizing point. Yes, I've got three adults, but having three adults on a bus seems like pretty much a waste of bus space. Okay, well, so there's different points in the seasonal region, okay? So anyways, that's a quick shot at systems of linear inequalities. Graph the boundaries to get the shape. How do you get this? Well, you have to read it and translate mathematics, you know, translate the English into the inequalities. All right, that would be it on systems of linear inequalities.